Today we will be looking into a major development in Nigeria's education sector. Now the federal government has recently announced the integration of 15 skill acquisition programs into the curriculum of primary and junior secondary schools across the country. And this move is seen as a step toward equipping our youth with practical skills for the 21st century. But what does this really mean for our education system? What does it mean for parents and students? And of course, the future workforce. Now, as we look at FG introducing 15 traits in new basic education curriculum, we, we are going to be weighing the pros and the cons on the front burner. Uh, our talking points this morning will be first, we'll take an overview of the policy change we will assess the impact on schools and teaching. And then finally, we would also look at concerns from parents. Let me ask you, what was your thoughts when you first heard about the new curriculum? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> to me, even though I'm a parent here, yeah, mm -hmm. but then I'm a trained teacher. I follow the curriculum, uh, interventions, um, um, modalities, and the kind of uh, upgrading in our curriculum in our schools. So we know very well when UBE was in place during uh, President Obama's Sojo regime, mm -hmm. that move JSS3, you know, match it with a primary school. Now we have basic one to nine. To nine so yes. then the idea of all these things is that um, the three domains of education, two of them have been left behind. So even the parents and the teachers, they are more into cognitive aspect of the domain mm -hmm. rather than the affective and the psychomotor. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what has drawn Nigerian economy back back. So mm -hmm. that's why we are not moving. Because having an education does not take you out of production or mm -hmm. having some skills to improve on the development of the country. Mm -hmm. So if this is now coming back now, uh, I think it's a good idea. Because then, when we uh, inherited or borrowed the idea of 634, so the, it's supposed to be a kind of um, a, a movement, a mentoring of the student, mm -hmm. monitoring them in their academic pursuit, what they are good on. So that is when we have the kind of a PhD, intro tech, fine art in those schools. So that at the point of GSS3, you know, all those uh, uh, accumulation of your experience mm -hmm. will tell you where do you fall back to? Well, when you get into se yes. to senior secondary. Into senior secondary yes. school. And you know, at that point in time, if you look at the organogram of the school now, that is where we, we have the technical schools, which most of us now, we don't even, the young now, at this, they don't even know that the technical school is part of educational process. Mm -hmm. So it is not compulsory that you, you pass your junior YEC mm -hmm. and for that senior school, no. If you are good in the psychomotor aspect of it and effective, you can go through uh, technical schools where you learn skills, you acquire a lot of uh, uh, skills, experience in tailoring, in baking, and all those things. Then you become, you know, full flesh of yourself, useful for yourself and the Nigerian society at mm -hmm. large. So, if government is now bringing all these things back now, I think it's a good thing for Nigeria at a large and uh, our economy can grow from there. And, uh, but you made mention and that you are also of a teacher. A trained teacher. A trained teacher, yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so now, looking at it um, like on the school's aspect now, yes, how can we, you know, help it to sustain this, um, you know, whole new curriculum? Because we have so many things like, you know, baking, tailoring, a lot of these things we are, which are actually very necessary because not everyone should, you know, have white collar jobs. Yes, of course. So um, in your own personal experience, how can we make sure or monitor this whole process to make sure that it's completely achieved? Yeah, it's very, very simple. You know, when you said I'm a teacher, I said I'm a trained teacher. The first thing that affected our educational system in this country is to allow infiltration of those that are not well trained in this teaching aspect to become a teacher in our schools. So it therefore means that they will lack the methodology to impart instruction into students. They will lack 
uh, what you call educational perspective in terms of curriculum implementation and interpretation. But for the trained teachers, they know all these things. Now, come directly to the question. You find out that the introduction of this curriculum that is bringing, uh, you know, coming into this perspective now is for the teachers to first of all understand what it's all about, how to go by. Do you get it now? Because when you look at the structure of Nigerian uh, uh, education, it's the perfect in the whole world. You are to be an educa educated person right from your primary school. By the time you have your primary school uh, certificate, common entrance, you should be able to have understood you know, the peripheral of what you know, uh, three hours, that is arithmetic, uh, uh, um, you know, we have a writing and the reading. That means you are exposed to English, you are exposed to, you know, little, little calculation. Indeed. So with that now, you can compete. Mm -hmm. By virtue of that position, you can compete. What is left for the teacher is to impart in those students that, look, it is not until you put on a tie that you are somebody in life. Mm -hmm. You can be a tailor and you move the wave. In, in, in this society. Mm -hmm. You get it now. You could remember that uh, Wasiwa in this spoke of his own designer then, and everybody was just rushing. Who is this guy? Do you get it now? And because of that, the guy turned, you know, to be a kind of- a sensation. Yes, making millions of naira from, you know, designing. Mm -hmm. So the same thing here, the tie and die, I think uh, Ogun State government, you know, established the tie and die, uh, this thing, than the, in, in the area of carpentry. But coming back to our school, when those, um, um, what do you call it, uh, those tools were being put in place, because I'm part of the second set of the six territory four mm. in the secondary school. Mm. I know what I met on ground mm -hmm. in terms of all those tools and machineries that were put there. But where are they today? They are gone. Mm. Why? Because some of the schools then do not have teachers that can put students through that uh, instructions. Mm. Automatically, a teacher that was not trained in that perspective, let's assume I studied chemistry, and you now said I should now begin to teach TD basically because I offered it in, in senior secondary school, and I'm able to pass. How do I handle those tools mm. that will now explain it to those children to b make them more understandable of all those tools. Mm -hmm. Those are the part of the problem that we have then. But as of today, those tools were not there any longer. Mm. But then, even if we are to appreciate or embrace all this thing, government should try to, you know, put those tools back there. Back in and the purpose of the UBE as, you know, specified or, you know, designed by the former president under uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo regime to make education free to that level, to that level, to that basic level without mm. asking the parent to pay a couple. Mm. Because we know in Nigeria, a lot of brains were being put out of school because of the incapacity Financial. of the parent, Indeed. you know, to pay. Indeed. But if this thing is free, then a child will pursue from primary one to basic nine and mm -hmm. become somebody useful in life. Indeed. Uh, you know, you mentioned um, the universal basic education, um, the reason for establishing that. You mentioned training, you mentioned all lot of things, but you know, and you also talked about the government should make it free for students or for people to have access to it. That will want to bring me to this question. Um, the funding is critical. Uh, the sustainability is also important. The federal government, do you think they are providing the enough necessary funding uh, and, of course, resources that can help, before this um, new curriculum even has been introduced, that can help education stand effectively? And with the new curriculum, do you think the government can also sustain funding? And if they can, how do you think that can be done? Between federal government and uh, uh, state government, there's a pact there where the state government is, can assess certain fund in, 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 uh, through the federal government. I don't know, maybe it is uh, around uh, 500 million per state or something like that. Those funds are there. 
and majority of all these uh, uh, state governments, they are not assessing those funds because of the situation we find ourselves in the country. You get it now. Aside that, some of them have all these uh, international you know, grants on these uh, areas where they can make this education uh, free. Aside that, you know very well that there are other philanthropies that are very, very much you know, um, ready to help in pushing uh, 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 the country forward. So there are a lot of funds outside there for them. But you know, it is when you know and understand certain things about what you want to do, that is when you can prepare and appreciate that thing more. But in a situation whereby you don't even have the idea or you are not interested in it, then that thing becomes very difficult for you, you know, to, to pursue. And that is what we are saying. Federal government that is coming under UB and said education should be free from primary one to uh, basic nine. So they are not saying it for fun. They would have done some uh, background, you know, uh, 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 checks and, you know, look into the budget, do some calculations before they could come up and say, yes, we can do this thing. And if they are coming up to say we can do it, automatically the funding should not be an issue in this area. Our government or the government ready to embark on this journey, which they are calling us. For we, the parents, we are happy and we are ready because it's going to reshape the life of our young generations. Mm -hmm. And the issue of uh, a conned, lazy youths will never be again. Mm -hmm. Because as a GSS3, if I know, yes, I've gotten a job in hand, you know, that, can, you know, that I can use to fend for myself and cater for my immediate family. And so I think that you take it so serious by, by that. And so I, I don't see any reason for me to be jobless or to be lazy at the end of the day. So it is the government that will tell us Either they are ready or they are not. Uh, as a parent, of course, uh, I'm, I'm speaking to you now, not in the capacity of a teacher now, because, I mean, you've dealt uh, so uh, you know, extensively with that. But as a parent, I, I want to find out, your children's school, have they reached out to you as to this new development, uh, this new curriculum that they're looking to implement? Have there been, you know, discussions about it? Well, uh, I think the question is neither here nor there. Okay. As a parent... We've never got such information. Oh. But you know the way school operates, they might have you know, detailed those children, and by the time they are coming, they'll tell your parent that like this, like that. But no but official. No official. Okay. And you know, like I'm measuring the, the bottleneck in the, all this uh, uh, scenario, mm -hmm. is the school does not, most of, most of the administrators, probably be, be because of their background, okay, they don't know that. Um, what is it called? Um, there should be a sociology of education mm. where you link the society with the school mm. in terms of communication, in terms of um, awareness, interpretation, dissemination of information mm. should be there. Because our children are still young. Mm. They might not comprehend everything you are, you are telling them. Mm. But by the time you expose all these things to the parents, we can as well guide mm -hmm. because the information is there for us to assess Indeed. and make use of it. But if we don't know anything about it, automatically there won't be. It is a shameful thing on the part of the government. We so much believe in and we have to, you know, dare all circumstances to put them in power, particularly in Lagos State. Even when the issues of uh, presidential election turn in this Lagos State, some of us will quickly you know, come together and say, look, we need continuity. And that was why the governorship election you know, goes into, in, in favor of the APC that brought in Governor you know, Babaji Deson Wolu. Now, why do we do that? Because we hope that uh, the dividend of democracy will come to us. No, coming back to modern colleges, the government said, all the facilities and the requirements, infrastructures, are there for us in modern colleges. Mm. And by, you know, merit purpose, our children were being, you know, admitted into those schools. Now, what is required of us is to do the feeding 
Do you get that? Because they are our children. If they have been going to day school, they will come back and what have you. We are not saying no to that. But where we have the issue is that right from under, those facilities, those uh, 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 things that the governor said they have provided, let them come out and show us hmm. where those things are. Because we, the parent, provided our children with such. We provided mattress uh, requirement, uh, they call it hostel requirement, mm -hmm. where you, you, you build a box like a shelf for your child, mm -hmm. you buy Macintosh, uh, uh, insecticide, um, air fresheners, uh, um, soap, and all those things. We are the one providing. And you know, that's the sense of we having the PF. Mm -hmm. When we see a dilapidated uh, dormitory or whatever, we move in because it is our children that has, you know, that will are be there. So we renovate, okay? okay, by our money. We have a levy then that we make, you know, open for each parent each to parent. Co contribute. And we go in there, we pull out this money and put. Some of the schools erected, uh, the, uh, you know, offered a water project in schools to the tune of uh, 15 liters capacity per, per day. So for these children to make use of. Now, if Mr. Governor is now coming now that they have done everything, I think the owner lies on the tutor general, the principals, who are the custodian of all this, because Mr. Governor cannot be in those schools. Mm -hmm. Let them come out and tell us if truly those things that Mr. Governor said they have provided were there. And that mm -hmm. was the first thing that triggered the whole thing. Secondly, I've never seen on earth where some, uh, but the government will wake up in a day in this kind of economy and said, you are, uh, you know, reviewing a feeding fee from 35,000 Naira to 100,000 Naira. As we said, that is 200% yes. increment. The same government have already issued out a memo communicated through uh, NDI and said they have been subsidizing education of uh, this model college with 200%. And the 200% when we are paying 35,000 Naira is the same 100,000 Naira. Now add 100, uh, two, uh, 100 plus 35, that is 135. In an average population of 1,000 students in a school, you are now having how many millions of Naira? Just only for feeding. If you are saying our children in model colleges should be fed with 100,000, what about those one at home? At home, we'll have the constitution to permits us uh, to have four children, Abby, maximum. Mm -hmm. But we are not saying we are, we are even going to that. Let's assume a family of four. That is two children, father and mother. mother. What is the uh, minimum wage? It was after Mr. Governor made a pronouncement of those things, he quickly came back and said, minimum wage has been made uh, 85,000 Naira. And we are talking about three months, 100,000 Naira per term. Hmm. That means in a session, you have to pay 300,000 Naira. For an average worker, that is any, let's even assume it is 85,000 Naira you are paying now. Multiply 85,000 Naira by three. You have 255, something like that. Abby, out of that 255, you are removing 200 mm. for the boarding fee of those two children there. Mm. How, many, how much do you have left? 55,000 Naira. You go to work, you feed, you clot, and you pay rent. We've given our uh, uh, demand letter mm -hmm. to Mr. Governor yesterday. Okay. okay. Part of the demand is that we won't be SMC, that is boarding school. Uh, monitor, uh, management committee to be in place. Mm -hmm. And these people, since 2021, they don't want it to happen. Why? Because how can a single person be a procurement officer, a, a, a cashier, um, a sole signatory of okay. our money? <laughs> okay.